about keyboards, when you would use different styles, and, and how, to, how to choose the right one for the people that you might be working with. This is a standard Dell keyboard. Um, it has your character keys here, your number pad over here. This is what comes with Dell key, Dell computers, HP. This, this is the standard. This is what everybody has. This works for most people. Um, when they're typing, their shoulders are relaxed, wrists are straight and not really deviated outward, and your hands are on the, the home row right here. If you're like me and you're a little bit larger though, what can happen is when you go to reach for the home row, your wrists tend to only deviate. You twist your wrist out just a little bit like that, which puts a lot of stress on the outside of your forearm and wrist. It actually will bring your elbows in and your shoulders up. So if the keyboard's small, it can cause discomfort in the shoulder and neck because you're trying to type like this. There are different styles of keyboard that are a little bit wider. Um, traditionally, what we think of when you start thinking wider keyboards is you think of the natural keyboard, which is made by Microsoft. Okay? And this is the swoopy one. Okay? It kind of looks like a Nike swoosh. But what they've done is they've just taken the two halves of the keyboard and completely separated them. So now they're, on, they're, they're open. So now when I relax my shoulders, bring my hands up, they're more in line with my wrist, so my wrist is a little bit straighter. So when I'm typing, I don't have to twist my wrist like this. Um, there's a couple of things about this keyboard, though. One is the distance between the keys is set, and the tenting, the amount of tilt, is also set. So if it works for me, that's great, but if I'm wider, or I'm just a little bit narrower, or I don't like the tilt, it's not going to work for me. So there's different keyboards, there's different ways around that. Um, with this keyboard, just a couple other things. One is, since it does have this big swoop to it, it doesn't fit against a standard keyboard platform um, where the wrist rest is straight. And if you have a straight wrist rest on a swoopy shape or a, a non-straight uh, keyboard, what happens a lot of the time is it pushes the keyboard back. So now you're reaching over your standard wrist rest over the wrist rest that's built into the keyboard and reaching for the keys, and that's forcing you to come forward. So if you use a keyboard like this, you can get a wrist rest that fits this. If you have the older style, the newer ones actually have a rubber pad that's built in, so it's a little bit softer. If you're going to use it with a keyboard tray, though, take out the wrist rest so that you can bring the entire keyboard closer and you can move it like this, so it's a lot closer. But if this doesn't do it for you, if it's not quite wide enough, if it's too wide, too thick, what we will do is we'll move to what's called a gold touch keyboard. Okay? And what's different about this is that the two halves are adjustable. So it has a lever up here on the top and a little ball bearing right there. If you lift this up, the entire keyboard will separate and bend and creak. So you can set that to where it's comfortable for you, and then you just lock it down. What you can do, to, so, so the way that works is you open up the lever, you would open this and maybe tent it a little bit, lock it back down so that the, the width of the keyboard matches the width of your shoulders, so that when you reach up from the side, your wrist stays straight and you're not deviating one way or the other. And then you set the tent so that it fits your hand. So you're not turning your hand all the way down to use the keyboard on the desk surface, but you're not at some artificial angle, it's where it's coming. The other real advantage to this type of keyboard is that it doesn't have a number pad right here. Um, with the traditional keyboard right here, the number pad is there. And so when you're working and you have to reach for the mouse, you're reaching over the number pad and over here to get to the mouse. So you're doing a lot more reaching than, than some people can handle. So we see a lot of people with right shoulder, right wrist pain because they're reaching over keys that they don't use to get to the numbers. The other thing that happens a lot with the standard keyboard is you're not sure where to place it. So you set, if you set the keyboard so that the center of the character keys, which is the B key right here, lined up with your belly button, so it's right in front of you, and you're reaching in like this, your hands are comfortable, but then to get to the mouse, you're way over here, and the center of the entire keyboard is actually over here. So what we see is people will slide the keyboard over here so they're lined up at the center of the keyboard. But the problem is, now they're typing like this. So the wrist is in a really awkward posture when they're trying to type. It does bring the mouse in closer so they're not reaching as much, 
but now it puts them just in a really awkward posture. So with the gold touch, what's really nice about that is since it doesn't have the number pad, you're not reaching over keys that you're not using, and that brings the mouse in here so you're not reaching nearly as far. So those are three typical keyboards or, or sort of common keyboards that we'll recommend. They do make different styles of keyboards. They make flat ones without number pads. They make some that the two pieces completely come apart. They even make vertical ones that have little mirrors on the side so you can see where your fingers are. So if you can think of it, they've probably, um, they've probably designed and built these things. But these are the three that we'll recommend the most commonly, and, and they're most readily available, and they'll work for almost everybody.